been speaking with a couple of business owners who've asked the question, when do we form a company? In this, I want to explain like what are good steps that you should consider when you're thinking about forming a company as somebody who is not your personal advisor, I am not your attorney, I'm not your CPA, but I've seen enough of these cases happen to kind of lay out decent framework so that you can at least have some talking points or have more groundwork to lay and begin your own journey. So I guess number one, if you have employees, depending on the kind of business you're in, that's probably a good cause for concern. You probably need to have some form of liability and that could be in the form of a LLC, something as simple as that. Also, depending on where you live, really depends on business goals. If you plan to take whatever venture this is, if this is the kind of venture that's gonna go public, you should make those kind of considerations in the kind of formation as well. So it depends and it varies, right? But typically, if you have employees, um, the next question is, what's up with the ownership? Is the ownership set up in a structure where maybe it's in a holding company? Maybe all of this is done privately. Um, like let's say, without naming names, let's say a private franchise and there's a holding company way in the back. And underneath that, there's a business trust. I think this is conceptually as, as deep as I'm willing to get. Um, but the point of having this kind of structure of a business trust with a holding company, with other LLCs potentially in there, depending on where the states are, it's all done with tax planning and family planning, succession planning, business strategy. Those are the kind of conceptual questions you should be asking when you have the responsibility of employees and how far into the future you want to go with what your business is. I think secondly, if you're, let's just say a 1099 independent contractor and you're earning enough income where the standard deduction question is a valid question now and you need to have all of your expenses and the bookkeeping the accounting all in line to understand from the beginning whether or not it makes sense to potentially form uh, a structure if it's more than necessary for whatever it is that you're doing again that's a question that you need to ask your own advisors, CPAs, tax attorneys, things of that nature. But on average, when you're earning, let's say, above $150,000, $200,000 in this kind of 1099 employment work, it's probably a really good idea to think about incorporation because there's lots of expenses that are required to do this. And then just from a structural standpoint, um, you have an ability to build a business uh, from profits from one kind of work. It could be work that you're doing physically or, you know, mental work, so to speak. And you're going to turn this capital that you're creating into another vehicle, 
and this other vehicle could be in the form of real estate, um, could be in the form of a retirement plan. Whereas if you're just a regular uh, employee and you don't have any of these entities set up, you're not offered any of these abilities. And so in that sense, incorporation is incredibly important for opening these avenues of putting your money at work for you. Third reason would be if, let's say you've taken as one of my friends that I just finished getting off the phone with was saying the Andrew Tate approach of let's just make a shitload of money right now and then figure out what to do. Probably a good idea to incorporate. Um, in this particular instance, it was during the NFT craze where There was artists, there were engineers, there were designers, and it was the perfect storm to match everything together and to use this all over Bitcoin and Ethereum to create this market. And they successfully did so, um, forcing us to kind of de decide what are the best structures if we're staying onshore or offshore, given that a good 80% of the developers were offshore, and that's because they had a, already decided to work remotely. Um, you know, things of this nature, how, how are we gonna go about doing a round of funding once and if that became a possibility? at which point it did. And since we had structurally already thought of what that would look like, we knew exactly the lay of the land and everything was already set in place. And all we needed to do was just sign the documents and get, get the documents in motion, really. So one of the top mistakes though that either new business owners or even old business owners and entrepreneurs make is a lack of having good books, good accounting, or the lack of a good team understanding the risks. And either in, even in some cases having a, a dependable person to rely upon to discuss business matters. Uh, I have one client who we only exclusively play tennis and then they talk about business. Um, exclusively only meet at a specific restaurant to discuss business. Go to a specific golf club, play golf, and then talk about certain aspects of the business. And it helps build this discipline to ensure not only the regular going ons of business, the regular day to day, month to month bookkeeping, accounting, record keeping, sending documents, form updates, admin, to also ensuring the KPIs that the business owners, the ownership, the investors, even the employees find valuable. That's where most business owners need to lean in more. And kind of from a retrospect, being able to do the tax planning, to think about exactly what it is that they want to do with the company and to be able to plan either an exit or a strategy where that 
is in the realm of possibility. Doing that means staying focused, having these routines, being able to meet with your advisors, understanding the structures and why you have these structures and how they work with one another, depending on the kind of sophistication that you're at. And I mean, if you're in that bracket where you're earning above two mil a year, you're probably gonna have some sort of, some, some sort of structure, ideally. And if not, you need to get one <laughs> immediately. Um, your team, the people who keep you accountable, the bookkeeping and the accounting itself, the the adage of Peter Drucker of uh, what doesn't get measured doesn't get managed. Your ability to see into the future, to build the dream, to build the mission, to build your vision as entrepreneurs, as business owners, only really happens when you have set goals and set ways to keep yourself accountable. And I think with that, it's a good framework to understand the importance of having structures and what these structures do for you and your business and how you intend on growing with them. Because ultimately, <laughs> when you do pass, all of this could be nothing, or you could be leaving the keys to an incredible financial castle that has been built generation after generation, which I've been lucky enough to see a handful of these, and it's basically planning, strategy, and a determination to making sure Things are on track to get there. And if not, the willingness and the ability to adapt as things change, because things change always. There's a community that I'm working on building where it's business owners who want to discuss their business, who want to grow their business, who want to take courses that kind of lay a good foundation of what's necessary to potentially get you to the next level. And at the same time, we can help you with your books, think about your tax planning, financial planning, estate planning, depending on where you live, taxes, uh, tax preparation. Check it out. It may be for you, it may not be for you. If not, there's ways to get in contact with us. You're smart folks. Take care.